we kept it simple but mostly stupid <laughs> have we ran anything on your property with a turbo yet yes, sir oh Not man today, baby whoa <laughs> that's whoa. a huge difference whoa, whoa, whoa. what's up everybody on today's episode of cars and cameras we are making some huge power upgrades to our limousine go-kart we took a regular go-kart and stretched it by over five feet so that three people can sit in a row. This thing is a ton of fun to do 11 foot long drifts with, but ever since we put it together, we knew it needed more power and you all in the comments agreed with us. So over here, we have our turbocharged 420cc drift trike. It's been sitting up a while and we've always known that the turbo power plant is kind of a waste on something with drift sleeves. So in today's episode, we're going to see if this engine will run, because it has been sitting, and then we're going to try to shoehorn it onto the limousine go-kart and see just how far up the Cars and Cameras leaderboard we can make this limo cart go. Amazingly enough, with a six and a half horsepower bone stock engine, it's number nine. So we're going to see if we can embarrass our own hard work and see if we can beat the Honduki or the dingo, or maybe even the cross cart. Kinda doubt it, but that's what we're gonna do today. And a big thank you goes to NordVPN for sponsoring today's episode. So we don't actually know how much power our turbo drift trike makes, but a stock 420 makes 13 horsepower, and with some backyard testing, with some backyard testing, we confirmed uh, that the turbo actually does make it quite a bit faster than stock. So fancy. Sweet. Also, big shout out to our new sponsor, Ben Pack, for sending us this ATV lift and this four post lift and some other things. We're saving our backs, folks. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. awesome. Air power or pump if you want to do it old school. Yep. So let's get it up in the air and see what we got. All right, ready? Yep. Oh, my back feels better already. All right, first things first, the basics. Check in the engine oil, uh, replacing the fuel because it's been sitting for, I'd say, at least two years, uh, and putting a new battery on it and seeing what happens. You know, I see some major upgrades to this thing in the future. Our charge pipe, we built this thing when we didn't own any type of tubing bender, so everything is just slash cut and welded back together. So our charge pipe there, it's probably not the best for flow. So in a future episode, we might be doing some performance mods to our uh, turbo 420 engine. But right now, we're just gonna get it running and swap it onto that limo cart. John just informed me that this thing always had a tough time getting primed up, the fuel pump. So I went ahead and removed the fuel line out of the old tank because it's been sitting just so we don't suck up any garbage. Got some fresh gas right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap out the hoses and we got the yeah it's it's tight in there dude yeah but first we gotta check the motor oil yeah what's funny that looks like the fuel tank no but <laughs> it's the we stuffed a bunch of electronics and wiring in there that's like the dashboard yeah <laughs> so our actual fuel tank is this little tiny guy right there we made out of exhaust pipe back in 2015. oil's good perfect oh yeah cool doesn't matter that they're not the right size because it's not going to go back on this frame. Let's try key. Sure. Make sure it's in neutral. Right, right. Find <laughs> the fuel. That's oil pump for the turbo. And I hear a fuel pump. I thought. Yeah, I hear it. Gotta plug in our battery, boss. Yeah. It's cold out there. Oh. All right. You wanna check for spark? Yeah. Or you wanna just throw some uh, 
Let's try and throw it in there and see what happens. Yeah, where do we throw it in at? Oh yeah, on the turb on the intake of the turbo. Yeah, dog. I can tell that's an Isaac. Yeah, dude, that's a washer. And we hogged out the inside of it, and that's part of our that's what seals up against our air filter there. Oh, that's cool. Technology. So we have this 420 cc forced induction engine, and all the air is going through that. It's so, the size of a quarter. I think there's, you know, it's we used what we had at the time, but I think there's still some, you know, power on the table if we get this thing to run in the first place. Yeah. So let's do it. Dude. All right. Yeah. yeah, we got spark. We got spark. It's faint, but it's there. I saw it. Okay. I mean, the battery's still kind of low. Yeah. Uh, maybe we have a bum fuel pump. Maybe, maybe it still hasn't picked it up. Maybe we're just not purging it correctly. Yeah. So yep. let's let's take that line off and see if we've got fuel primed all the way up to there, right? Yep. Okay. We kept it simple but mostly stupid <laughs> so this whole time we, we put our fuel source into the fuel return to the tank i forgot this has a uh put the fuel back in the tank if if it's not using it so <laughs> 50 50 my fault your fault it's all right no big deal there's also a 50 percent chance we're gonna oh we need something to catch this gas that's about to spill out of here oh we went through the effort to try to drain the fuel tank manually and we forgot that a fuel pump could do it for us so we had to fill up the tank all the way, and we're just gonna cycle the fuel pump and get rid of the nasty gasoline when it starts to look good. We'll just put it on the injector. We did have to prime the system, and hopefully that was our problem. And that fuel didn't smell too bad. Oh yeah, you can hear it. Nice. So cool. It's a self-learning system, so it, it's probably like, where am I? <laughs> you know? Dan yeah, woke up with like six open pages <laughs> and music playing from somewhere that it had no idea. Oh boy. It still works. And the oil pump is still working, so that's good. Um, okay, so it runs. It's a little rough. Why don't we just take it down the road and back? Why not? I mean, see if it clears up. Make turbo noises. Make turbo noises. I mean, have we, ran, have we ran anything on your property with a turbo yet? Yes, sir. Oh, not man. Not today, baby. Ow. That's nice. You're a wizard, Harry. Turbo working. That's cool. Oh god. That's scary. It's cool. Uh, you can really hear that turbo working. It's a sweet little project. I can't wait to have it on the limo. So 
sounds like it's kind of breaking up, but man, it hauls. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're still working. Yeah. Sweet, man. Oh my goodness. Cold, huh? No, well, it wasn't too bad. That was just kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot of beans. It's got a lot for only having a bicycle break up front. <laughs> All right, so it has a little bit of running issues, but I think this is a green light to go ahead and pull this engine off and start mocking it up on the limousine, so let's get to work. But you know what? Quick moment of silence for the turbo drift trike. Long live the turbo drift trike. That's a lot of room for activities. Yeah, that's a, that's a big hoss we just took off there. Yeah, we're gonna need to figure out what to do with the alternator too. Yeah, um, well, well, we'll put it on there. Maybe maybe put like a Flintstone wheel in the middle, dragging the ground <laughs> and spinning it. I don't know. So we gotta take this bad boy off here and uh, put the limo cart on and, and see what we got. It's a lot of space uh, that we're gonna have to fill on that limo cart. Yeah. Uh, it'll be fine, right? Yeah. Thank you, Ben Pack. Nice. Nice. Oh, this is definitely gonna bottom out. No? Ooh. Okay, yep, a little there bit. There it goes. That was a quick one. And it's nice that the engine was at this height. I'm not like lifting it from the ground and then... Whew. All right, it's a lot of moto. <laughs> That's Whoa. a huge difference, dude. I guess they're, I guess the rumors are true. There is no, was it, replacement for displacement? Absolutely not. And a little hair dryer on there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whoosh. It's all well and good. We just got to find a home for all that. First things first, we know that bracket is going to be in the way, so we're just going to give it a little bit of a bend. All right. Yeah, let's try that. That's a monster right there. Oh my God. That's a refrigerator. That ain't no engine, man. So the boosted 420 is mocked up. It looks like it was meant to be in here. Uh, we're just trying to find a home for the alternator and a new fuel tank. So the alternator will probably try to mount somewhere down here with the pulley that we pulled off of the uh, drift trike. And the nice thing about doing this is that it's going to be driven off the crankshaft, meaning that it will be charging all the time when the engine is on, whereas before it was mounted to the axle and it was only charging when the axle was spinning. So the fuel tank will probably end up going right about there. So we still have access to the switches and the pull start if we need it. But unfortunately, it's still gonna be lower than the, uh, the injector there, meaning that we are gonna still have to bleed it. So. We might look into mounting it up here. The problem with that is that you have hot exhaust, you have a uh, hot clutch. So if we spring a leak, it's gonna be it's gonna be like fajitas. Good thing this engine isn't bolted down. Oh, but that's nice, man. Yes, sir. Right. One inch clutch. So we're gonna sand down that crankshaft just yes. a little bit so yeah, we can needs... slip our pulley on. So we've done some figuring and we think we have almost everything figured out for the most part. There are a couple considerations. We need to make sure our chain and sprocket lines up. We need uh, to mount our alternator on here, which we're thinking somewhere around right back here because, well, that'll be better than in front of because there'll still be a chance that we can shorten this go-kart and go back to a regular go-kart with a turbo 420 someday if we want to. Doesn't, uh, that, doesn't that just roll off the tongue? Oh, it really does. It's great, dude. It's great. We need to make sure we can tension our uh, our alternator, which it should be fine. We need to go get a 90 nipple for our oil. Uh, fuel tank's gonna go somewhere over here, so we can still have room for our flip switches and our pull start. I think that was pretty much it. We're gonna be installing a new engine plate because we're upgrading to a larger bolt pattern. We have a Go Power Sports quarter inch, super thick, super heavy duty engine plate here for a 420 and 670, I believe. These things are sweet. We've been using them a long time and I mean, 
you're not going to break that even with a turbo 420. So these things are awesome. You can check one out at a link in the description. If you're building a go-kart, mini bike, drift trike, or a limo go-kart, Go Power Sports has all the parts you need at great prices as well. And anytime you place an order with them, let them know that Cars and Cameras sent you. So, uh, Charles is going to run tractor supply to probably grab a slightly smaller pulley. So we're underdriving the alternator just a little bit, robbing less power. We also need a nipple. Let's get to work, right? Yeah. Cool. Well, we were trying to remove the old engine plate so that our new engine plate would have a level surface to be welded on, and it just turned into a hack job. Turns out, I didn't look underneath the old engine plate to see that it was welded also underneath. So not only was it a pain to get to on the top side with a grinding wheel, but it was also just impossible on the bottom side. So the other option is to weld all of our hacking back together, and then when we put our new engine plate on there, stack a little bit of material about that thick, uh, and weld it with it. You know, we're we're fulfilling, what is it, the KISS method, keep it super stupid. <laughs> that was us. <laughs> so we need to roll this thing over to the other shop, and uh, we can weld it back together. We yeah. can weld our spacers in there, and we can mm -hmm. probably go ahead and mock up our, our alternator and tack in the engine plate. Don't worry, I'm a volunteer fireman. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're crushing anything. Alternator pulley. Not sure which way it's going to go on. And then we got a clutch, which we know goes on. Yeah, dude, we're real close with the sprocket alignment. Really? Real close. Yeah, let's just get Good it done. Go Power Sports gusset. That works perfect? Yeah. Sweet. So it's always a good idea to plan your attack route before welding or grinding. And we haven't completely done that so far this build, but uh, uh, we're ready to tack in the engine plate. We have an ideal spot where we want to mount the alternator, and then we have a backup spot where we could mount the alternator. But our uh, big engine plate is going to have to get trimmed a little bit either way. So we're going to get it tacked onto the chassis, uh, and then we're going to remove the engine and make the trims so we can fit up our alternator. Got it. I made a simple bracket for our fuel tank out of just scrap metal we had laying around. It doesn't have to look pretty, no one's got to look at it. And I'm going to give it a tack right about here. We need room to get the engine out, room to move the engine forward. So those are my considerations and I'm probably going to need to brace it down from the frame up to the back side. But I'm going to start by giving it a tack weld here. We've been getting over some sickness funk for the last couple of days, which has given us plenty of time to catch up on our favorite movies and TV shows. So let's take a second to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. If you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network that you can set up on your devices to protect your online identity and data while you browse the internet. In fact, NordVPN doesn't even track, collect, or store any of your data, so you maintain all ownership of your information. I love using NordVPN when we are out on the road for events, in and out of all kinds of hotels across the country, where the Wi-Fi is definitely questionable in terms of security. It also allows me to watch all my favorite shows and sports uninterrupted in high speed with no buffering, and if they've been removed from streaming here in the United States, I can still watch them on a different server with just a click because NordVPN has over 5,200 servers to choose from in 60 countries. And I can't forget that Nord also blocks annoying pop-up ads. So if you want to start securely browsing in peace, go to https colon slash slash nordvpn.com slash cars and cameras to get a two-year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Big thank you again to NordVPN for sponsoring today's episode. Now let's get back to the build. So now that I'm not contagious, I'm coming in here and helping the boys with the wiring on this project. Uh, 
and I thought it would be great to add the regular ignition switch up front here for the driver. So I'm uh, drilling out the hole here so I can install this switch and then I'm going to wire it up to the engine and uh, I got to do a battery too. Charles, what are you working on buddy? I've got the oil pump got the oil pump welded on or the bracket to hold the oil pump I've got all that plumbed in and the oil cooler and you're gonna be working on the uh, alternator right I don't have a bracket John's making that'll the bracket the, yep that'll be in the morning but that's okay so. anyhow so we're getting well on our way to having this thing a ripper hopefully by the morning yeah so I just got back from our local tractor supply with the right size belt. Got the alternator off the 919 or the 212. This sweet bracket tensioner. Tensioner bracket or, ten, yeah, tensioner bracket assembly that John made for us. It's gonna mount up right here and here. Oh gosh, you can't even see it. Right here and right here. Oh gosh, somewhere in there so the thing can pivot. I've got the engine centered in its sliding position on the engine plate so that way whenever I mount this up hopefully the alternator is in the center of the pivot bracket if that makes any sense so I'm gonna try and set the camera up so you guys can see what I'm doing so once I get the bracket and the alternator lined up with this v-belt pulley on the crankshaft once I get that lined up, I'm gonna try and give it a tack on the frame, and I'll pick the camera back up once I get that done. All right, so I do I do not have any keys in anything on here, so. Well, that looks good to me. I know it's just tacked, and I may have to come up with something to reinforce right around here, or just kinda gap weld right there. Heck, man, why don't you try turning the key on, on and we're going to look for smoke. So far, so good. Just hit the key. Hoo! Should I do it again? Sure. Okay. Woo, All nice! Right. So the big block turbo limo cart oh, is about mouthful. It's a mouthful. Is about ready for a ride. We uh, cut out a sweet alternator bracket with the Crossfire Pro, and it's a pretty clean install, so we should be able to... Oh, the motor's not tight yet. The motor's not tight, and I hadn't hooked up the alternator. Okay, we got to hook up the alternator, the wiring anyhow. We got to uh, tighten down, tighten the, down once, the engine. Once I put the chain on it. And then probably run some zip ties on our wiring that's like nine feet long. It, it looks like I spilled a bunch of spaghetti over <laughs> Then it's going to be ready for a ride, boys. Yep. So, uh, whenever you're ready, sir. Hey, right, Yeah. Fuel's got to pump. We probably need to bleed the fuel line. Got to do the fuel line thing. Oh. I should build pressure and like spray someone in the eye. Should probably put my. Oh, there it goes. So the key still doesn't turn it off. Key still doesn't turn it off. So we need to figure out if uh what that is. Or just don't worry about it. Other than that, it's dialed. Yeah. We should probably figure out the key because we don't want to be one person in here with a runaway 15 <laughs> plus horsepower right. go cold boy. Right. Uh, so how do y'all have the throttle hooked up? I never watched y'all hook up the throttle. Magic. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna all three go for a test drive on the limo cart, and then we need to see 
if this thing is going to break the top five in the Grand Prix. Yeah. Charles, what did you say? Oh, uh, like if it get if if all three of us can get on the leaderboard, I'm buying dinner. I didn't say where. <laughs> well, we can get on the leaderboard, but I don't think we're going to do that great because it's a swamp out there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Ike, are you ready, man? I am so ready, and I just like to point out, I am wearing a mask. It's not because, um, like I'm sick or anything. I'm getting over getting sick, and my lungs hurt. This cold air. Uh, makes my lungs hurt real bad and get a coughing fit. So I do better with a uh, mask on because... Whoa, I can't see your nose anymore. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's gone. It's invisible. <laughs> so, all right. Let's go <laughs> that being ride. said, yeah, we're ready to go for a ride, man. Go ahead and get it warmed up, Ike. <laughs> I'm going to say it has some horsepower. I think it. I think it did. <laughs> oh, you can hear the turbo. I mean, I know what is it? It's like turns on a dime, but that's more like turns on a like half dollar. This is so big. <laughs> I don't think that's the correct way to warm this thing up, but uh. <laughs> Charles, you want to hop in the back seat? So yeah, you let me can get feel all the seats are full of mud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> One person needs to do the Grand Prix. Okay. Let's see how fast it'll go. Okay. And then all three of us need to go and we need to see if Charles is buying us dinner. All right. Okay, so the time to beat for a single rider is a 102. Now we've gotten a ton of rain in the past month, so I don't know if it's gonna happen. And then after Ike uh, does that, we're all three gonna get on. And if we can beat a 104 around the Grand Prix, Charles is buying dinner. Gotta warm the tires. Yep, yep. Why'd she die? Why'd she die? Why'd she die? I'm a little suspicious that uh, the uh, over here, yeah. The fuel in the tank might have sloshed to one side, and we just lost it. And we lost it. So I, I'll just go for another yeah. try. On your mark. Yeah. Get set. He's got a 102 to beat. He's moving. Holy moly. So close, man. What are you doing in? 105. 105? I'd give him a 104. Five. I might be a little late on the bus, but it was 104. Or 105. I can do it. 
You gonna go again? Yeah. He did it! Yeah. Oh, Holy moly! A yeah. one minute flat! Woo! Right. I cool. mean, so it's two seconds faster with Turbo 420 on it. Yeah. In the wet conditions. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations, sir. I felt pretty good about that. Yep. One minute 50. Really? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I That's gonna be us, man. All right. Well, Charles and I are gonna get our helmets on and- I'm gonna put on a trash bag. <laughs> We're gonna try to beat that time to get us on the board. 104. And, yes, and I'll go buy dinner. So are you ready? You ready? All right. On your mark. Get set. Go! I just went for the scariest ride of my life. When I, when I was looking back and saying it's got a, we got a wobbly axle, it hadn't gone flat yet. Oh. It was the donut that popped it, I think. But anyway, look, you def, it's got a hole in the sidewall from over here. So one way or the other. It's, oh my gosh, I gotta go to the laundromat. Oh, this, is my, this is my nice coat. <laughs> it was either that one or, oh, the one that we broke out of the concrete. <laughs> I did that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I mean, that's not light either. Like, that's a big rock. Are, are you sure I just did yes. that? Yes. I mean, dude, I'm pretty darn sure. I mean, I didn't feel it. Yeah, well, that's because you were 10 feet ahead of it. Oh, look, there's rubber. <laughs> that's what you hit. That's what got okay. it right there. There's also a couple of spots right there, too, man. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. It's all right, man. Uh, let me just say the front half of your cart placement is perfect. Maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> we just leave the sharp side. The rear half needs work. So Charles got out of buying dinner this time. We only managed a 107, but again, the track is super wet and we popped a tire, maybe bent a rim and an axle. But that was a ton of fun. I don't want to do it again, but that was a ton of fun. That was hilarious. So uh, subscribe to Cars and Cameras because coming up soon, we're going to be making some upgrades so that our, uh, our engine, our turbo 420 might make more power. We're talking an intercooler uh, for cooler air going into the engine we might be rebuilding our charge pipes uh, yeah, as new well hot and cold side. yeah new hot and cold side that's what we gonna do because uh, we have better tools to get stuff like that done a little bit smoother uh, anyway thanks for watching everybody this was an absolute riot leave a thumbs up we will catch you next time all right so now that I'm not contagious <coughs> we do that again. <laughs> you couldn't have wrote that better yeah all right, take two. All right.